happen. Remember that there's not only one way to do these, but. You can um, put this on top, turning it into cosine. Good. So I get cosine theta times tan squared theta. That's less. Okay, so sine squared over cosine squared. And then uh, you can like, take off the squared of the bottom cosine and take out the cosine. Okay, so then I'm sine squared over cosine. And then you can work on the other side and split the cosine, I mean the, the tangent into sine over cosine and turn it into sine squared over cosine. Okay. Anybody keep going with the left? That's right, good. But also, if I just take this, so if there are two signs here, this is sine times sine over cosine. And then I can do sine theta times tan theta. So both, I would have given credit to both, okay? But you can keep going. Anybody do it differently? You did the one, like, on the left? Or, okay. All right, two. What's one way to start it? Yeah. Um, I have a On one. So I would say if you're working and you want to change it while you're working, that's fine. Just make sure you bring it back at the end. Yeah. I mean, this sucker's just easy to use the shortcut, right? Literally bring the tan to the top and the cotangent to the top. And I get cotangent x plus tan x. And that's the same order. I mean, that's the same expression, different order. So good? Yeah? Okay. All right, how about three? Three is the first time we had one with a co-function, right? Again, I think people are scared of them, but to me they're so easy to spot. What if, if it's cosecant of pi over 2 minus t, what is this equivalent? Secant, so I can read that as sine t times secant t. I won't write it every time, but then, okay, then go from here to what? What's secant? One over cosine. One over cosine. And then this is sine over cosine, and that's tangent. So hopefully we're starting to get a little bit more used to these. I would say that you're gonna have you're gonna have a couple on well maybe three I think there is at least on but they're also built into what we're about to move into on your test again which is next Tuesday, and there are gonna be some in my opinion that are on the easy side and then maybe a middle and then there might be a challenging one but they are not they they are not all challenging and they are not all easy. I would say there's a scale there, and you might see something right away that makes it easier which is great, and then you might not see something that was designed kind of as an easy one, but you miss something that's easy, and so it, you make it harder than it is, okay? We, w we don't want to do that plan. We want to stick to what's easier. Questions on the homework that was due this morning? So the solutions, I post the PDF solutions. They should be available now. It's not like web assigned, obviously. I'll start with 15 just because so it's, it's in order. All right, so this one says... And this is a great question leading into what we're doing today because you're going to see this happen. If you look at 15, on the left-hand side, you've got cosine and sine. On the right-hand side, you only have sine. So I know I'm going to try to eliminate that cosine in some way. If it was cosine squared plus sine squared, it'd be 1. And that's an easy replacement. But if I did cosine squared minus, so like if I did sine squared, if I try to manipulate it, plus cosine squared equals 1. There is no way to get cosine minus sine. The signs just are wrong, okay? So we have to instead work with replacing one of those. Since on the right, there's no cosine, I want to see if I can replace just cosine. So if I take that same trig identity and I solve it for cosine, it would be cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. And that means I can replace cosine squared with one minus sine squared. I'm leaving out the variable, but I'll bring it back in at the end. And then I'd get one minus sine squared minus sine squared, and that becomes one minus two sine squared beta. 
So it's weird, but hopefully when we start to see that we could replace them in any of the, like we can move those, manipulate that Pythagorean identity any way you want. And you're going to have to do that when we get to some of the questions in 5.3. So the goal in 5.3 is to get it to just one trig function like that. All right, so 55 is the, it's also a tricky one. We talked about it yesterday, but we didn't work through a full um, example. We said, if you get, or I said, if you get stuck, like if there's nowhere for you to go, the last suggestion on that list of strategies is to multiply by the opposite of your expression if you have a binomial. So if I have a binomial, which is two terms on the bottom, and I can't get it out, it's not squared, so I can't use the Pythagorean identity, it's something like one minus cosine then what I can do is multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the opposite of that expression. So if I did that, it would look like this, one plus cosine. And the reason you do this is because you're bringing in your squared and you're bringing in your Pythagorean identity. Because on the bottom, one minus cosine times one plus cosine results in one minus cosine squared. My numerator I'm gonna keep as sine beta times one plus cosine. For where? No, you want to do the same in the top and the bottom. Okay. So you got to keep, that's how we balance out that fraction. That's why we can do it. We got to multiply the same thing in the top and bottom. So now think about it. One minus cosine goes back, or cosine squared goes back to your sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. If I move cosine to this side, I get one minus cosine squared equals sine squared. So then sine beta times one plus cosine beta goes over sine squared beta. And then one of those signs cancel out and I get one plus cosine beta over sine beta. So especially if the left sides and the right sides have terms that are in your Pythagorean identities, like all that's there are sines and cosines, it's usually a good indication you're gonna, and you're stuck, like you can't move anything in the bottom it's usually a good indication you're going to have to do that process. So you're multiplying top and bottom by the opposite of the denominator. Or the numerator if it was stuck the other way because we could have done the same thing on the right. Like if I worked the right, I would have multiplied the top and the bottom by one minus cosine. And then I would have gotten the trig identity in the numerator and it would have canceled with the bottom. Questions? All right, so we... Okay, what'd you do? So moved it to the top? Yeah. Okay, so it becomes cosine. I don't know if this works. Let's see. Then, did you distribute it? Let's go with this. Distribute it. Then there's a reciprocal in there, so I would try to make them all. So this is cosine. This is cosine times one over sine minus cotangent. Oops, sorry. This, well, actually we'll be able to do this because this is cotangent. You could have also like made this sine over cosine, I mean cosine over sine, and then gave them a like denominator. That could have also worked, combine them. But the way that you started it still works. You would just have to, as soon as like you see that there's a reciprocal function in there, like cosecant, try to change it to a reciprocal function and see if you caught that that would be cotangent. If not, you would change cotangent to cosine over sine, and then you'd get positive cosine over sine minus cosine over sine, it would have canceled that way too. made which one cosine or cotangent you mean so if i f so cotangent would be cosine over sine yes and then cosecant over secant yeah you could do that i don't know that that helps but you can do that well but it would have been secant oh you mean from the beginning yeah. right that's what i was saying like you could have made this cosine over sine yes you could have flipped it and made it cosecant over secant 
And then you would have gotten one plus cosecant minus cosecant over secant. These cancel, one over secant is cosine. That works too. Yeah. All right, so t tell me how you started it. Did you do the reciprocals or did you foil it out? Okay. Let's see. Secant, cosecant, plus secant, minus tan, cosecant, minus tan. All right, then secant is 1 over cosine, and cosecant is 1 over sine. This is 1 over cosine, sine over cosine, and 1 over sine and sine over cosine. So these denominators are close, right? But there's two that are missing a term. So if you wanna give them a like denominator, this would be one over cosine sine. This one's missing the sine. So it'd be sine over cosine sine. This one, sine over cosine sine. And this one's missing the sine, so it'd be sine squared over cosine sine. Now all the denominators are the same, so if I focus on my numerators, I have a positive sine and a negative sine, those cancel out, and then I get one minus sine squared over cosine sine. One minus sine squared is cosine squared. And then one of your cosines cancel. And I get cosine over sine, which is cotangent. You could also like change them individually. Like that would work too, like inside each in parentheses. But if you distributed it out, you had to get them all to have the same denominator. Sorry? Of course. The next section is 5-3, which is solving trig equations. So we take it to the next step. We're going to have an equation this time. There's going to be an equal somewhere in your statement. And your goal is to kind of combine what we did with inverse functions and trig identities. We're going to solve for a trig function, and then we're going to find the angle that satisfies that trig function. So this is, if I got to my answer, how could I check it, is what example one really is. It says verify that the given value is a solution. So 2 cosine x plus 1 equals 0 is my equation. And it's saying that x equals 2 pi over 3. So if x equals 2 pi over 3, then I can take that and I can plug it in the place of x. And I get 2 cosine 2 pi over 3 plus 1 equals 0. Now, by now, hopefully we have our unit circle memorized. I'm going to bring it in so that we get the visual on it. Because my next step would then be look at my unit circle and find cosine of 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is here. What would be the cosine at 2 pi over 3? Negative 1 half. So I get 2 times negative 1 half plus 1 equals 0. And 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. And negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So the reason we lead with this example is because every single question in this section can be checked if you had the extra time. You could literally take your answers and plug them in. So instead of it telling you what x is, you're now going to get something like this. 2 times cosine of x plus 1 equals 0. And then your job is to figure out what angle satisfies that. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, like it won't work? Correct. So if that had said sine, then we'd use the y. It could say tangent. It could say secant. It could say cosecant. It's going to go through all of them. All right. 
So these are what the steps are. We're going to locate. So if it says finding the angle given the solution, we're going to locate the solution on the unit circle. And this time you're going to give all the possible angles. So this is where it's different from inverse. This is no longer an inverse where we have to restrict to just pi over 2 to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 or 0 to pi. You're going to use your full unit circle at first sine and cosine. So we use the full unit circle for sine and cosine. I'm going to look everywhere it happens, and every angle really should happen, or every value should really happen twice. And then there's two types of instructions on here. One, it says find on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And for those, you literally use your entire natural unit circle, and you would give every time that answer occurs. So if I had a question that just said tangent, I mean, it won't be this easy, but let, or let's do sine. Sine of theta equals one half. Then I'm going to go to my unit circle and I'm going to find everywhere the y value is a positive one half. And that happens here and it happens here. And I would give those two answers in radians because the directions told me zero to two pi. That's my indication that it's radians. So pi over two, I mean pi over six, sorry, and five pi over six are the two answers because it happens twice. If it said tangent of theta equals 1, and again, it was on the same interval from 0 to 2 pi, this would be helpful, again, to know your tangents. Remember, the 1s are at the over 4s. This is where it's positive 1, and this is where it's positive 1. In the other quadrants, it's negative 1. So the answer to that would be pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So if it gives the interval, you literally use that full natural circle. I'll probably do what we did the same time, the same, the same thing again. And then by the mid midterm, you'll just get it because by then you'll already know it. Yeah. So tangent, like what I would do is probably add on the tangents just like we did last time. So this one's root three over three. The over fours are one. The over threes are root three. I would, do, I would have done it all the way around. And then because you're looking for where it's one, it happens in the first quadrant because that's where tangent's positive one. And in the third quadrant, because that's the other spot tangents, positive one. In, in quadrant two and, th and four, it'd be negative one. So again, that's if the instruction said zero to two pi, okay? There are two different sets of instruction you have to pay attention to. If it doesn't give you the interval, if it just says solve, then you have to follow this stuff here. So without, if interval, not in the instructions. If the interval is not in the instructions, not only do we have to give the answer from the original unit circle, but we have to give every coterminal angle to that. And the way we do it is this notation. For sine and cosine, we take the answers and we add 2n pi. You literally leave it as 2n pi. You'll also see it as 2k pi. Those mean the same thing. Okay, but what that means is I can go one more time around my unit circle and I get the same answer. I can go two more times around my unit circle, I get the same answer. Three more times, four more times, five more times, that's what N just represents a constant. So sine and cosine repeat every full circle. So if the same question had been given, if it said sine of theta is one half and it didn't give me the interval, then my answer would have been pi over six plus two N pi and 5 pi over 6 plus 2n pi. So for sine and cosine, we pick the ones from the circle. We add 2n pi. For tangent, now tangent's weird because tangent repeats every half circle. So for tangent, we would only give the answers in the first and second quadrant. And then we add n pi. So if it was the same question as over here, uh, then my answer would have been pi over 4 plus n pi. And it's not because 5 pi over 4 is wrong. It's because pi over 4 plus 1 pi is 
5 pi over 4. So you're duplicating your answer. So again, sine and cosine, we add 2n pi. Tangent, we add n pi. And sine over cosine, we use the entire natural circle. Tangent, we only use the first and second quadrant. All right. Oh, all of those should have been equal signs. I don't know what happened. All right. Is yours like that too? It's weird. Okay. So it says, uh, the, again, it doesn't give an interval. So without an interval, and it just said to solve, right? Or it didn't say it because this is... That, that's what this means. You have to add in the n pi and the 2n pi. So for sine being 1 half, we just did this, right? Sine was 1 half at pi over 6 and at 5 pi over 6. And because the interval is not in the directions, we would add on 2n pi. The next one says cosine is negative root 3 over 2. So if I look at my cosines, I'm looking at my x values, which ones, which angles have negative root 3 over 2? Seven, 7 pi over 6 is one of them. And 5 pi over 6 is the other one. And because the interval is not in my instructions, I'm going to say 5 pi over 6 plus 2n pi. And I'm going to say 7 pi over 6 plus 2n pi. And then that last one says tangent equals negative 1. We did it where it's positive 1, but where would it be negative 1? 3 pi over 4. And remember, tangent, we only use the top if the interval is not given. So it's 3 pi over 4 plus n pi. All right, so now we're going to take it a step further, and we're going to have to solve. We're going to have to do some work on the front end. The goal is to isolate the trig function. So we solve it just like it's an equation. We would subtract or divide whatever it is to isolate your trig function. And then we'll use that unit circle to figure out where that value is, just like we did before. So again, notice there is no interval on this, which means we're going to have to add for sine and tangent, I mean sine and cosine, we're going to add 2n pi. And for tangent, we're going to add n pi. So go to A. How would I work to isolate sine? Good. Add the 2. I get 4 sine squared x equals 2. Divide by 4. Sine squared x equals 1 half. And then there's a square there. So if that was x squared, what would we do? Square root. What do we have to remember? Plus and minus. So the sine of x equals plus and minus the square root of 1 which is 1, over the square root of 2. Is 1 over root 2 on your unit circle? No. What happens to that? It got rationalized. So if I multiply both the top and the bottom by square root 2, I get plus and minus root 2 over 2. So think about it. Try to picture it without your unit circle. It's saying where is your sine root 2 over 2, positive and negative, which means how many answers are there? Four answers, right? And it's every, what's the denominator here? Over four. It's every over four. So it's pi over four plus 2n pi. It's three pi over four plus 2n pi. It's five pi over four plus 2n pi. And it's seven pi over four plus 2n pi. So now if this is a multiple choice question, you will actually see them eliminate half these answers. You will see them say pi over 4 plus n pi, and you will see them say 3 pi over 4 plus n pi, because if you take those two and you add 1 pi to them, you get the other ones. So if this was a question, and it was, if it's open-ended, I'll give you the credit for it. It doesn't matter. 
But if it was multiple choice and you saw these eliminated and these change to just n pi, those mean the same thing. Because pi over 4 plus n pi gives you 5 pi over 4. And 3 pi over 4 plus n pi gives you 7 pi over 4. All right, go to, two, or go to B. What do you do here? Good, factor. If that said x squared minus x equals 0, you would factor out an x. So now it's just sine squared x minus sine. I'm going to factor out a sine. And I get sine of x minus 1. And then there are two separate expressions, so I'm going to split and solve. Where is sine 0? 0 and pi. Where is sine 1? Pi over 2. And each of those would get your 2 n pi's. And again, if it's open-ended, this answer is totally acceptable. If it's multiple choice, you will actually just see that written as 2n pi because 0 plus 2n pi is just 2n pi. Yeah? When it's tangent, you add n pi or when the instructions say on the interval of 0 to 2 pi. So if the instructions restrict your interval just to the natural unit circle, you just use the natural unit circle. Okay, so now go to tangent. What's step one? Add one. Then? Good. Then? Square root, making sure I put that plus and minus on the front. And I get tan of theta equals plus and minus square root one, which would be one, over square root three. And that becomes what? Square root 3 over 3. So what angles would have positive or negative root 3 over 3? All the over 6s. So it would be pi over 6 plus n pi. And we only use the first and second quadrant for tangent because it repeats. So three or 5 pi over 6 plus n pi. With extra time, you can literally take and plug in all these answers and check to see that they give you the left side balances out to the right side. Sure. So the question is, is it ever given in degrees? Your book does not. Web assign, I don't think, does. But like if you just go to the web or you look at like con practice or CUDA practice, whatever it is, and you search for solving trig equations, there are times that you'll see it 0 to 360. And that means give my answer in degrees. That's all. That's how you'll know the difference. Okay, try. All right, so G is obviously cosecant, right? So when we get to the end, when we solve it, we're going to end up getting something like cosecant equals. And cosecant is obviously not on your unit circle. So you can like try to flip the actual values on your unit circle and see if it matches. But my advice would be flip the actual answer. So like if it's cosecant, then I'm going to take it, make it sign, and flip the answer. So when I solve this, I'm going to add the 4. I'm going to divide by 3. I'm going to square root both sides, making sure I do that plus and minus. And then I get cosecant of x equals plus and minus the square root of 4, which is 2, over the square root of 3. Now before I rationalize it, I'm going to check because I have to flip this. I'm not even going to rationalize it. I'm going to flip it. If the cosecant is plus and minus 2 over root 3, that means I'm looking for where the sine is plus and minus root 3 over 2. And then because I changed the instructions and I said on the interval, I'm not adding 2 n pi this time. I'm using the full circle. So where are your sine values root 3 over 2, positive or negative? All the over 3s. So pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. Questions on that one? All right, so for age, this is where we're going to have to factor. If you, again, are thrown off at all by the cosines, then make a cosine. So I'd get 2a squared plus a minus 1. 
I can do first times last year. I could do trial and error. I'd get negative two factors of negative two that sum to positive one or two and negative one. Replace your middle term. Factor by grouping. And I get a plus one, two a minus one. And now I bring the cosines back in. And I split and solve. So I'm looking for where cosine is negative one and two cosine x equals one. So cosine x equals one half. If I go to my unit circle, where's the x? Negative one. Pi. Where is the cosine or the x? Positive one half. Good. F f pi over three and five pi over three. First and fourth quadrant. So we don't put the two pi here? Not if the, so I added the instruction on to reduce your interval or restrict your interval from zero to two pi. That's, I would say, is one of the biggest pieces of information or biggest piece of advice I would give you is make sure you read these instructions carefully. If it gives it to you, you don't add it. If it doesn't give it to you, you have to add it. All right, last one, and then we're going to stop for today because we'll save the multiple angle part for tomorrow. Look at I. What do you notice about I that hasn't happened yet? There's two different trig functions, right? We can't solve if there's two different trig functions unless we could factor it into two separate ones. And then we could split and solve. But that's not going to happen here. Because if I move cosine to the left side, I'd end up with 2 sine squared x minus cosine x minus 2. And I cannot factor that. That's like having a y squared and an x, right? You cannot factor that. So think about what we did at the beginning of today. We replaced one with the other, right? I cannot use Pythagorean identities on anything raised to the first power. So I cannot replace the cosine because that's to the first power. But sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, which means sine squared by itself would equal what? 1 minus cosine squared. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it in place of the sine squared. So I get 2 times 1 minus cosine squared minus cosine x minus 2. I get 2 minus 2 cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 2 equals 0. The positive 2 and negative 2 actually cancel out. And I end up with negative 2 cosine squared x minus cosine x equals 0. Now, if the negatives throw you off, switch them to the other side. Multiply everything by negative 1. It doesn't matter. You can get rid of them. If it doesn't bother you and you want to factor it out, you could just straight up factor this out. I would take out a cosine. I could even take out a negative cosine there if you wanted to take the negative out. I get negative cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. And then you split and solve. So I get cosine x equals 0, and we know that the x coordinate is 0. Two places, top and bottom. Pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And I would solve the other one. I'd get negative 2 cosine x equals 1. Cosine x equals negative 1 half. And my x values are negative 1 half at 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. And then all four of those are your answers. Questions so far? Okay, so I will say this, that like the question, and I'm wondering if you meant something else earlier when you asked Xavier. These kinds of answers, you might get a value that's not unit circle based or that's not possible. Not your trick. I, I don't know if that was what you're asking. But like let's say I go to solve this and I factor and I get cosine of x minus 1 and then I get cosine of x minus two after I factored and I split and solve this. I know cosine can equal one. This can exist, right? So like that answer will happen. It's, it's one at, at um, zero. But if I get cosine of x equals two, is that possible? Is it possible for cosine to be bigger than one? No, so we would literally just ignore that kind of answer. 
So if you get to something that's one, not unit circle base, if it was 0 0.5, I can convert it. If it was 0 0.75 and I get like three fourths, something like that, that it's not that it's not possible. It's not on your unit circle, so it shouldn't happen in tonight's homework. That would give you, an, you'd have to get your calculator to do those kind. But if it's impossible, so if I'm saying sine or cosine is bigger than one, or I'm saying secant or cosecant is less than one, it's not possible. So that you would literally just ignore that answer and use the other one. All right, so the web assign is posted. It does, don't go in there yet, though, because it doesn't have tomorrow's part. If you did, you'll have to refresh it because I have to add on tomorrow's part. So what's in there so far? I forget how many questions are in there, but I'll post it. Up to this point in there is what you can complete. Again, I would say don't save it all for tomorrow. It's going to feel like a lot if you save it all for tomorrow. But tomorrow we are going to add on the multiple angles, and then all of it will be due on Thursday. So I, I'm going to do that right now.